Today's flake was directed by Byung Chun Min and was released in 2003. Natural City is like the South Korean version of Blade Runner due to the movie being based on the same book, so at least it must be a fun watch. If you enjoy the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. This video is just my personal opinion and you should watch the film. You can find links to it in the description. Natural City begins with a guy and a girl sitting down on a bench in front of a beautiful lake. Behind the lake, there are some castles and what looks like a flying city. While enjoying the beautiful view, a voice starts talking and tells them they have three minutes to return to their residence. The voice repeats that phrase like 10 times in the following minute. If that was annoying to me, imagine how it was for those guys. Suddenly, the lake disappears. It was a simulation. They are in what seems to be an airport. We see flashbacks of the life of the girl we saw in the first scene. She is in a laboratory and they're doing something to her. She has a chip implanted in her head. The credits are over and now the girl is in front of her dad's grave. Her dad's last wish was to be buried with a cyborg, but she wasn't so happy with that. The scene ends and we are now inside a spaceship. Cyper N77, a cyborg that disappeared a year ago, has broken into the medical center with four of his cyborg friends. The medical center here is the place where all the human DNA is stored, obviously. The guy from the lake is called R and he is part of the police that will try to regain the medical center from the cyborgs. It's important to say that cyborgs are shaped like humans. When R and his team enter the building, a cyborg suddenly appears from the water and attacks them. They shoot him several times until he's dead. To kill him, they need to destroy the chip he has on his head. So no headshot, no party. While the 10-man police force is trying to kill one cyborg, Cyper N77 is inside the facility to steal some DNA. The DNA he needs is from someone called Scion. He is trying to find a match and he finally does as the police arrive. Before arriving at the room where Cyper is stealing the files, there is a long, foggy corridor. How convenient. Cyper begins to crawl through the mist and out of nowhere, he, she, it, whatever, a guy is dead. Everyone is freaked out because they can't see. Cyper kills two or three more guys and then he starts running. Yes, he is a robot and he's very fast, but I can't believe how he was surrounded by 10 guys and still escapes so easily. While the police are having a bad time trying to catch Cyper, R is at the building entrance stealing the chip of one of the dead cyborgs and thinking about all the money he will win by selling it on the black market. Cyper runs for his life when he passes next to R. He takes advantage of the situation and kills him. He was helpful after all. After being the hero of the raid, he goes to see a guy that is creating a robot. R asks him if he can save Rhea. Rhea is a cyborg and she will stop working soon. R fell in love with her. He wants to fix her so they can live together. So romantic and so creepy as well. Okay, now seems a good time to introduce the world. Society is so technologically advanced that they make robots that can do the same activities as humans. These robots or cyborgs work as waiters, bankers, prostitutes, and who knows what else. R may look like a weird guy and maybe he is, but he's just as weird as everyone else. So getting back to the action, some random guy is trying to sell Cypher's body to an underground scientist, while Cypher suddenly comes back to life and kills the scientist. R goes to see his friend Dr. Jiro and tells him he has some exciting news. It seems like Dr. Jiro was able to extract the chip of a cyborg's head and then he implanted it into the head of a real human. So he created a cyborg but with a human body. It's cheaper. Now Dr. Jiro gives R a photo of a girl so he can implant Rhea's chip into her body. This is the same girl that was disappointed because her father wanted to be buried with a cyborg. She's also the same girl whose DNA matched Cyper's quest, Scion. Scion met R in a restaurant and she fell in love with him. She had like a fortune cookie but in chopsticks and she was trying to sell them to R. R took one, the chopstick had an inscription saying they would end up being together. On the bright side, you will end up marrying him. The problem is he will implant the mind of a robot into you, a small sacrifice to be with the man you love. As if he was Sherlock Holmes, R finds Sion and persuades her to see Dr. Jiro. Sion is sick and believes R is trying to help her. Jiro is ready to start the surgery, but Noma, R's boss, suddenly arrives. To make a cyborg, you need to have a license, so Noma arrests Dr. Jiro. Rhea has only a couple of days left before she stops working, but to fix her, Jiro needs to be out of jail. R is not so happy with how things are going, so he decides to go ride his motorcycle.
motorcycle with Rhea to let feelings loose. While riding the bike, he decides it's a good idea to pass by Sion's house. By saying he passed by his house, I'm saying he passed through his house. Luckily for him, it was a wooden house, so it was easier to pass through with his motorcycle. He then tells Sion to meet him a day later so he can pay her back for destroying her house. The day of the meeting is the same day Jiro is free again. It's also the day Rhea expires. Another tricky convenience. The day Sion and R have to meet, Sion rejects him due to having had a rough night, so she goes to her friend's house and sleeps a little bit. Cyper hacked the police security system so he knows where Sion is. Sion is almost asleep when her friend suddenly falls dead to the ground. Cyper is now alone with Sion, but the police arrive just as he is about to kidnap her. They start fighting, and as we've seen before, the police are underqualified for these situations. They're trying to get Cyper, but he and his friend are challenging to kill. Suddenly, someone throws a smoke grenade and takes Sion with her. It was easy to assume that Cyper took Sion, but it was R. He saved Sion. I didn't see that coming. Cool plot twist. Noma is thinking about how bad the police are and how unfair it is they ever thought of firing him. While looking at the situation again, Noma found out something interesting. Cyper, Dr. Jiro, and Sion have the same DNA. So that means Jiro transferred his consciousness to Cyper's body. Cyper is about to expire, so he needs a body with the same DNA. R doesn't know about this, so he goes to take Jiro from prison. He will finally make Rio work again. While both are happily leaving the prison, Noma arrives and kills Jiro. Poor R, every time he's about to be happy, something happens. R gives Sion the money he owed and explains that he wanted to use her body to save Rhea, then leaves. I'm sure Sion will have trust issues after that. Sion is alone again, so she's an easy target. To Cyper, kidnapping her is like taking candy from a baby. He decides to take over the police headquarters. When he arrives at the police headquarters, he can reach the control center by pointing a gun at one of the main officers. There's nothing as easy and effective as that. While being there, he orders the officer to program all the fighting cyborgs with the police data. If the police can't deal with two cyborgs, imagine them fighting against dozen of them. This is gonna be an oil bath, get it? Blood bath, oil bad, because the Okay. In the meantime, R decides that the last couple of days have been rough, so it's time to take a vacation. He and Rhea are going to Mayoga, the city of the beautiful lake we saw at the beginning of the movie. Noma has called R a couple of times, begging him to join the police force so they can try to save the city. R doesn't answer. R is making an intelligent choice. It's obvious Cyper will defeat the police, so why go and risk your life when you can have a vacation in a beautiful city with your expired robot? R and Rhea are sitting on the same bench as in the first scene when he suddenly gets up and tells her he's going to buy the tickets. If he decides to save the city, I'll be very sad. Maybe it's the right thing to do, but come on, poor Rhea. Back in the police headquarters, everything is a mess. The cyborgs are killing most of the cops that are in there, but Noma has a secret weapon. He calls for air support. Cypress' friend puts a time bomb in his body and starts running towards the helicopter. She runs down a hallway no more than three meters wide, and the helicopter has machine guns. Easy job, right? Not for these guys. The cyborg manages to avoid the bullets and jumps towards the helicopter at the exact moment of detonation. The explosion wasn't very big, so in the end, no policeman died. That seems like a victory to the police to me. The bad news is there are so many cyborgs that it's impossible for the police to kill all of them. Instead, they decide to activate the self-destruction mode. The headquarters will explode in 10 minutes. Everyone starts to leave the facility except for Noma. He's entirely alone and must fight against dozens of cyborgs. Noma starts killing all the cyborgs that are chasing him, but there are so many of them, it's evident he's gonna die. Just as a cyborg is about to kill him, R arrives and saves him. Sadly, R leaves Noma to bleed to death and goes to chase after Cyper. R arrives at a room and finds that Sion is trapped in some kind of tank. While trying to do something, Cyper hits R from behind. Cyper looks very comfortable fighting against R, who is bleeding on the floor. Remember how I said R left Noma bleeding to death? It was a joke, he was bleeding, but the injuries weren't too serious. Noma takes a shuriken, which I'm 101% certain is what you call those ninja stars. The shuriken gets stuck in Cyper's hand, but the interesting thing is that it was a time bomb. Cyper dies right after the explosion. Noma is so injured that he falls dead to the ground. 
R is seriously injured too, so he lays on the floor as he watches Noma die, for real this time, sheesh. After a few minutes on the floor, R recovers and takes Sion with him. The headquarters will explode in two minutes. They arrive at an emergency exit that looks like an elevator. R places Sion on the elevator and asks her to find Rhea. I don't know if the elevator was too small or if he just wanted to die, but let's just say that he was a hero and sacrificed himself. Sion leaves in the elevator while the building explodes and R dies. Whilst everybody is dying in the police headquarters, Rhea is alone at the station. She was in the same simulation as the one we saw at the beginning of the movie. When the simulation ends, she realizes that R is trying to save the city, leaving her alone. This is way more emotional than I anticipated. She recollects all the memories she had with R and proceeds to remove the chip from her head. She is now dead. As R's final wish, Sion goes to the station to find Rhea. She finds her dead and says that Rhea at least had someone willing to die for her, something Sion doesn't have. Sion takes a picture of R and Rhea as well as Rhea's chip and she buries them near her father's grave. Rhea stares at the city as the movie ends. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you do, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Please let me know if there's any movie you think I should do next. Until the next one.